Hi guys, this is Sarah. Welcome to my channel Biotin. This is a sincere effort taken to explain the concepts in the syllabus of Standard 10 Biology according to the Samachar Kalvi for your faster learning and easy understanding. I will be uploading videos in the upcoming weeks covering all the topics according to the pattern in your textbooks. My ultimate goal is to cover up all the portions and make it easy for you guys to have a happy learning. Before we get started, I would request all of you to subscribe my channel and hit the bell button so that you will get my notifications as soon as my video gets uploaded. Thank you. Let's get started. The first unit in your textbook is Plant Anatomy and Plant Physiology. In the coming weeks, I would be dealing with all the concepts in the unit coverage. Please do have a look at it. We start with the introduction. Plant exhibits varying degree of organization. As you all know, everything in this universe is made up of atoms. So atoms are organized to form molecules. Molecules are organized to form organelles. Organelles into cells. Cells into tissues and tissues into organs. Before we get into a detailed study, we need to know what is plant anatomy. It is a study of internal structure of plants. Here we also have a fact to know. The father of plant anatomy was an English physician named Nehemia Grew. Next we move on to tissues. Tissues are a group of cells that are similar or dissimilar in structure and origin but perform similar function. Plant tissues are classified into two based upon their ability to divide. The two tissues are mercematic tissues and permanent tissues. Mercematic tissues are undifferentiated cells capable of cell division. Permanent tissues contain non-dividing cells which are modified to perform specific function. This is not mentioned in your book but I have told you for your added information. Next we move on to tissue system. Tissue system was classified by a German botanist named Sachs in 1875. He classified tissue systems into three types. Dermal or epidermal tissue system, ground tissue system, vascular tissue system. First we have dermal or epidermal tissue system. It consists of epidermis, stomata and epidermal outgrowth. You can see the parts in the picture given. Epidermis is the outermost layer and it protects the inner tissue. There are minute pores called stomata inside epidermis. The stomata helps in transpiration. Cuticle is present in the outer wall of the epidermis and it checks evaporation of water. Trichomes and root hairs are the epidermal outgrowths and it helps in absorption of water and minerals. Next we move on to ground tissue system. Ground tissue system includes all tissues of the plant body except epidermal and vascular tissues like cortex, endodermis, pericycle and pith. Next we move on to vascular tissue system. Vascular tissue system consists of xylem and phylum tissues. They are present in the form of bundles called vascular bundles. Xylem contains water and minerals to different parts of the plant and phylum contains food materials to different parts of the plant. There are three types of vascular bundles namely radial, conjoint and concentric. Now we are going to see about radial bundles. The xylem and phylum are present in different radii alternating with each other. You can see this format in roots. You can also see the picture. Next we have conjoint bundles. Xylem and phylum lie on the same radius and in conjoint bundles there are two types of conjoint bundles. One is collateral and the other is bicollateral. When the xylem lies towards the center and phylum lies towards the periphery you have the collateral type of bundle. In the collateral bundle when the cambium is present it is called open type and this type is seen in dicot stem. And when the cambium is not present, it is called closed type and this type is seen in the monocot stem. So, I think you all know what cambium is. Cambium is a tissue layer for the plant growth. Next, we move on to bicollateral. 
In this type of bundle, the phylum is present on both outer and inner side of the xylem. The example is cucurbita. Next we have the concentric bundles. The vascular bundle in which the xylem completely surrounds the phylum or vice versa is called concentric vascular bundle. Here you have two types. One is the amphivasal and the other is the amphicripal. Amphivasal, when the xylem surrounds the phylum, it is called amphivasal type. And when the phylum surrounds the xylem, it is called amphicribal type. For amphivasal, the example is Draxina and for amphicribal, the example is ferns. Next, we move on to endarch. In endarch, the protoxylum lies towards the center and metaxylum lies towards the periphery. This is found in the stem. Next, we have exarch. Here, the protoxylum lies towards the periphery and metaxylum lies towards the center. This type is seen in roots. Now, I am going to explain you the table in 12.1 of your textbook. It is tissue system and its function. So, here the table is divided into three. Tissue system, its component and its function. So, in the dermal tissue system, the components are epidermis and periderm. It is found in the older stems and roots and its function is for protection and prevention of water loss. The ground tissue system, you have the parenchyma tissue, the colenchyma tissue and the clarenchyma tissue. The functions of this tissue is photosynthesis, food storage, regeneration, support and protection. Next you have the vascular tissue system. The vascular tissue system as we already learned it has a xylem tissue and the phylum tissue and xylem tissue its function is to transport water and minerals and phylum tissue is to transport food. Okay guys with this we come to the end of the session. Hope you all understood it. If you have any doubts leave it in the comment section. My next video will be on internal structure of roots. Stay tuned for more. Happy learning.